So I want to show you how things change when we move from DFAs to NFAs. And here's our JFLAP DFA. And I'm going to start by um, just uh, deleting all of these labels. So I'm going to right click on one of the um, one of these nodes, one of these states. And I'm going to say um, clear all labels. I just don't want to see the labels um, while we're tracing stuff. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, we know about NFAs now, so I can get rid of state Q3. And this is still, I'm just going to click somewhere else so Q1 um, isn't so uh, blue. Um, and we know that this is a perfectly fine NFA. We don't need an out transition for every single letter of the alphabet again anymore. I'm going to take Q1 and just squish it in a little bit. And I'm going to take Q2 and squish it in a little bit just so I can show you a little bit more on the screen. And in fact, I'm going to um, reduce the size of stuff a little bit too here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put Q2 down there. That won't bug you, will it? And then I can show you things just a little bit bigger. So here is my um, my NFA that accepts strings over the alphabet A, B um, that start with one or more A's, sorry, zero or more A's, and then have as many B's as I want, right? And the first thing you need to know um, when you're working with JFLAP and you want to do NFAs is how the heck do I draw a lambda transition? And the answer is it's super easy. You go up to the transition creator and then you um, do a standard click on Q0 and move to Q1, assuming you want the transition to go from Q0 to Q1. I'm going to let go of the mouse now. It asks me for what I want to put um, in as my label for this transition. And I'm just going to hit enter. And uh, presto, it gives me a, um, a lambda on top of this B. So remember, we now have two transitions here, a B transition and also a lambda transition. Of course, this is going to change what our, our um, NFA does, right? Um, after I add that lambda transition there, I believe we can have any number of A's or any number of B's. So our... Um, NFA, oops, let's see if I can get a cursor in here where I can type. Our NFA used to um, be as many A's as I wanted, followed by an odd number of B's. Right. Um, let's just make that a little bigger so you can see it. Um, and now, in contrast, really, I'm back to A star, B star. That's it, right? Um, let me show you the uh, NFA again. I can have zero or more A's, and then if I want an odd number of B's, I can take this B and then as many more pairs as I want. If I want an even number of B's, I take the lambda transition and then as many um, B's as I want. And I can indeed have zero B's because I can take that lambda transition. So this, um, this new um, NFA, by adding that lambda transition, it really changes what this NFA does. And the other thing that it changes is the number of ways we can walk through this NFA, right? So let's suppose that we have the string ABB. Um, and I want to show you what are all the possible um, traversals of this um, NFA that you can do if you have ABB. And let me, let me pull up... Um, a nice slide that I made here. Um, if you have ABB, right, if ABB is my string, we're always going to start at Q0 because Q0 is the start state, right? So up here at the very top, I start at Q0 and I have the string ABB and I'm doing something similar to JFLAP in that I'm telling you which pieces of the string have been processed and which haven't, but instead of um, graying out the um, parts of the string that have been processed, I'm making them red just so you can see them different uh, in a contrasting color. So no matter what, we always start at state Q0 and we have the string ABB. But then we have a choice. We can follow, we have to process this first letter, right? 
and we can choose to process that first letter. Well, we have to process the first letter if we're going to process anything at all, right? If we process that first letter, that A, then we take this loop, we end up at Q0, right? But we've processed the A, and we have two Bs remaining. On the other hand, we could take the lambda transition. Now, I think I said this earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, JFLAP uses a lowercase lambda. We use uppercase lambda in our hind book. It's fine. They're the same thing. Um, so we are going to, um, our other choice is to take this lambda transition. And then we don't use up any of the letters in our string, and we end up at Q1. And so that's this, this, this um, step. So in step one, I can either be at Q0 with A processed and BB remaining to be processed, or I don't have to process anything. I take the lambda jump, I'm at Q1, and I have everything still to process. Okay, So that's the state that I could be in when I have after the first step of processing, right? After the second step of processing, I have to say, well, where does this guy go and where does this guy go? Um, if I am at Q1, it's pretty easy. I'm at Q1. I need to process the next letter up is an A. I don't have any lambdas when I'm at Q1 that I can possibly take. I don't have any A's that I can possibly take. So this link dies. This is not um, a possible road to acceptance, right? So I've just drawn an X there. On the other hand, if I'm at state Q0 and I've processed that A already, the next thing I need to process is a B, and I can choose to either take the lambda or I can take the B. If I take the lambda, I'm not processing anything in my string. I end up at Q1 with the A used up like before and nothing new used up. If I take the B and I actually process the B, then I end up at state Q1. I've taken the B transition, so I've used up one more B. So now I have two um, letters that have been used up and one remaining. So far, so good. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, say, what can I get to from each of these? Well, I'm at state Q1. The only out transition is a B, no lambda option, so I have to take a B. Um, fortunately, the next thing up to process in this particular example is a B, so I can go straight down to Q2, right? I take this B to Q2, and I've used up the B, so now I've used up two letters, and I have a B remaining. Or maybe I've already used up two letters, so I take that last B and I've processed all my letters and I still end up at Q2. Now at this level, I've used up all my um, all of my uh, letters in my string here. I'm at Q2. It's not an accept state. It's not a final state. So I need to I need to stop. But if I'm at Q2 and I still have a B left to process, I can process it, go back to Q1, and now I'm at a final state. I've processed all the letters in my string, so I win. Now, it's a real pain to draw out these diagrams every time you want to see what happens. Um, and the cool thing is that JFLAP will let us actually step through um, and show us each of those steps as it happens. So I'm going to try and have both of these um, on the screen. We'll see what happens on the video. So I'm going to go back to JFLAP. And I'm going to say I want to do an input. And I want to step by state, right, like we've done before. And it's going to ask me, what's your input? I'll do the same input that I do, did as the example above. I'm going to say ABB. And I'll say OK. And let's see if I squidge that a little bit. Oh, look at that. Isn't that good? All right, here we go. Um, so we start out and at the zeroth step before we do anything, we're at state Q0. We still have to process ABB. And that's what it shows here. Now, the one thing that, um, that JFLAP doesn't show us right here is the full trace, like I've sort of done here. But if I say step, we should be getting to um, to this level right here, this sort of level two, right? Um, so if I say step, you'll see now um, I'm either at Q0, having processed the A with BB left over, just like I said here, or I'm at Q1 and I have an A BB left over, right? Um, and so now I finished that first step. I'm going to go to the second step, um, which gets me to this level, right? 
So if I hit step again, let's see what it tells me I could be. Well, it tells me this one, I was at Q1 with ABB and it, and it failed. That's why this is red. Or maybe I'm at Q1 having processed the first two letters but not the third. That's what this says. Or maybe I'm at Q1 having processed the first letter and not the last two. And that's what this one is. So now I'm sort of at this level where this cross out is sort of at that level. All right. Let's do another step. And you can see we're back down to two options. We have this option and we have this option, right? Um, in this first option, and you can see they kind of bop around a little bit at what order they put them in, which is a little confusing, but you just deal. This one says, well, I'm in state Q2, process the first two letters, but not the third. State Q2, process the first two letters, but not the third. This other one says, I'm in state Q2, I've processed all my letters, just like I have here. So we know if I take another step that this one is going to say, oh dear, fails. And the other one actually, so this is green, this is red. Um, you can see that this one has succeeded and this one has failed. Now you can click on a, um, on one of these options, like let's click on the green one to select it. And then I can say trace. And up here, um, I've just moved it down, uh, pops up a, a path that shows you what was the, what was this green ABB path. And it shows you that just like we have our winning path here, we started at Q0, went to Q0, went to Q1, went to Q2, went to Q1, right? And so that's our, um, our winning path here. Okay, let's do something that's even more complicated. Um, let's get out of this simulate tab. And I'm going to, um, oops, get rid of, oh well, so much for me doing that fancy like. Um, I'm going to get rid of that window and I'm going to just, oops, grab Q2 with the um, attribute editor tool, move it over there. Um, and what I want to do now is I'm going to add one more transition from Q0 to Q1. This is just to make our traces a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go to my transition creator and I'm going to drag from Q0 to Q1 and I'm going to add an A transition. Um, so now if you look at this, our string ABB, right, can succeed in two ways. We could do a loop here and do A then take a lambda b, b. Or we could take this first transition on a, go a, b, b. So there's two possible paths. And in fact, um, JFLAP can show us both of those paths. So if we do a, um, we do input and we say step by state, we're still going to do that here. And I'm going to say, again, my input is ABB. Um, I haven't traced this for you, but we're just going to watch and see what happens. So we started with ABB at Q0, right? We step and look, there's three different things we could do. We could either have taken that A here, we could have taken the A to get to Q1, or we could take the lambda to get to Q1. I'll do another step. Um, and if we took the lambda to get to Q1, we're dead, right? We're hosed because there's no A's that are out um, transitions from there. So this one has turned red already. But our other possibilities in one step have let us continue. If we take another step, we see we have our first success, right? Um, if we did the A, B, B route, we already have a success. But we can continue to step. This one's going to go away and we can see if anything else is successful. And we see this is red, not successful, but this path was successful. So we can click on this one now and say trace. And it'll show us what was that path that I took, right? And the path for this one that I took was I started at Q0. I took the A transition and stayed at Q0. Then I took a lambda across to get to Q1. And then I ended up at Q2. And then I ended up at... Um, at uh, Q1 again. 
right? But maybe we actually want to see what was that other trace that I did. Let's see if this one can stay here while I select the other trace. I'm going to reset and let's just step again until I get to that first successful one, right? Let's click on that and let me say trace and here it is. And I think if I squidge this guy in, yeah, now both of the traces are behind here. Let me just show you. There's one of the traces, there's the other trace, right? So I've got both of them. They're both here if I want to see them. 